Hello everybody, this is Dr. Powers and we're going to look at some problems related to sampling distributions and the normal distribution and the T distribution. So uh, let's get into this. Uh, first off, the empirical rule. Uh, the empirical rule is a rule of thumb that we can use with the normal distribution. Now, I'm assuming you already know a little bit about the normal distribution, but basically uh, it's a bell curve and 68% of the 68% um, of the probability in the normal distribution is within one standard deviation of the mean. 95% is within two standard deviations, and then 99.7% within three standard deviations. So uh, for this problem, we're told that housing prices in a small town are normally distributed with a mean of 149 thousand dollars and a standard deviation of eight thousand dollars what are the bounds for the middle 95 percent of house prices well the empirical rule says that the middle 95 percent is bounded between uh it's within two standard deviations of the mean so you take the mean and two standard standard deviations the mean is 149 thousand and two standard deviations is uh eight thousand times two. So the upper bound is going to be found as 149,000 plus this 16,000. The lower bound is going to be the 149,000 minus this 16,000. This is uh, a, it's pretty, it's a pretty good approximation at those, um, but it's, it's, it's not exactly two standard deviations for the 95%. It's closer to 1.96, but the rule of thumb that we use, the empirical rule says two standard deviations. Um, and then you can use other, uh, you can break it up in other ways to, uh, to look at, uh, you know, probability between, uh, you know, where is like just between zero and one standard deviation, how much is there? Uh, but you can just a little bit of practice looking at a chart, you can get the idea with that. All right, so new employees at a company are given a proficiency test. The test scores are approximately normally distributed with a mean of 220 and a standard deviation of 15. A new employee comes, okay, his score is 218 on the test. What is the employee's Z-score? A Z-score is you take the difference between the value that they got and the mean of the distribution. So that's going to be 218 minus the 220, that's what we observe minus the mean, and we divide this by the standard deviation, by the 15. This is our z-score. That's how you get a z-score. Now a manager wants to invite all the new employees in the top 10% to a conference. What is the cutoff for the top 10%? The top 10% for a normal distribution can be found using the um, uh, the norm dot inv function. Um, I want for the top ten percent. That means we're that's the same as the lower ninety percent. I'm going to use point ninety because the normal inverse uh, function in Excel is is all in terms of the lower tail probability. So if I have ten percent on the upper side on the top side, that means there's ninety percent on the low side. Express this as a decimal. So point ninety. Now I can just give it the mean of uh, 220, which we're told is the mean of the distribution, and 15, which is the standard deviation. When I do this, it's going to give me 239.2233. So uh, anybody who scores above 239 can be invited to this conference. That's the idea. That would be the top 10% of scores. Weights of adults in a certain country are normally distributed with a mean of 168 pounds and a standard deviation of 33 pounds. A random sample of 55 individuals are weighed. All right. Now we're going to be thinking about the sampling distribution of X bar, the sample mean, or the sample average. Um, first off, from the central limit theorem, we can, we can say what is the 
mean of the distribution of x bar. So on average, we would expect x bar to be the same as the mean of the population, 168. But its standard deviations can be based on the standard deviation of the population, which is 33, divided by the square root, SQRT, the square root of the sample size taken, 55 individuals. This is called the standard error of the mean. It's, uh, so we expect the sample mean to be close to 168 and with a, a standard deviation of 4.44. So although a single individual, we expect that person to be at close to 168 pounds, but with a standard deviation of 33 pounds, a sample of 55 individuals, it's much, much less likely to be that far away from the mean of the population. This is, again, it's coming from the central limit theorem, and this is the, um, this is the, the basis for why, uh, for like statistical inference, um, this, this fact. This is why we take large samples because the chances that a large sample mean varies far from the, the population mean is pretty slim, and that's an important fact. All right, what is the probability that the sample mean is above 180 pounds? Okay, uh, now we're going to use what we've just found for the sampling distribution, the mean of 168 and the standard deviation of 4.4497. We'll use that to answer some probability questions. The probability the sample mean is above 180. Okay, that's going to be norm dot dist um, I have oh you know what uh, first I'm going to put in the 180 the mean of 168 and the standard deviation of 4.449 oh you know what I'm going to do I'm just going to select this cell because it goes off to more decimal places I want to be as precise as possible I'm going to also say true I want cumulative probability but there's one thing I need to do. This is going to give me the lower tail probability, the probability less than 180. But if I want the probability that the sample mean is greater than 180, I have to take the complement. That's one minus this. This is going to give me the right tail probability because the norm.dist function always gives you the left tail probability. Boop, that's pretty slim, isn't it? That's about 0.35% chance. So if you if the if really the mean of this population was 168 and the really the standard deviation was 33 if you were to sample 55 individuals from the population and the sample mean was above 180 that would be extremely rare event that would lead you to suspect perhaps the population mean is not 168 Maybe it used to be, but maybe it's great. It's it's gone up. That is the idea that we. Um, that's the idea of a hypothesis test. We'll be learning about hypothesis tests uh, next week. What are the bounds for the middle ninety-five percent of mean weights? Now, for this one, I'm going to use uh, the. I'm going to come. This is this is actually a. Uh, a confidence interval but let's find let's I'm not going to use the 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 empirical rule I'm going to use the actual uh, critical Z value Z star is 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 the um, norm dot uh, what's oh s yeah sure I can use oh you know what I'm gonna do Let's forget about this. Let's think the, the middle 95%, this is between 2.5% uh, on the low, the, the low end uh, and 97.5% on the, the, the top, right? The, that's gonna trap the middle 95%, 2.5% on either end. So I'm going to use norm.inv for this. Um, so the 0 0.025 is the low side. I'm going to put in the mean of 168 and the 4.449719. 
that gives me the low the lower bound and the upper bound is going to be norm.inv 0.975 the mean 168 in the standard deviation of 4.449 whatever <laughs> and then this is what we have so these this these bounds are what i would expect the average um so if i was to do a sampling of 55 individuals there's a 95 percent chance that my sample mean should be between those two numbers that's what i'm saying here all right more about sampling distributions suppose that left-handed individuals make up 11 percent of the population a sample of 100 people 140 people are chosen at random and we're going to consider the sampling distribution for p hat the sample proportion what is the mean of its distribution the mean is going to be 0.11 exactly the same the average value for p hat our sample proportion should be 11 percent the same as the the population uh, proportion but from sample to sample it will vary the standard deviation of the sample proportion is found by taking this formula it's the square root of p hat um, that's 0.11 times 1 minus this value p hat or not p hat just p <laughs> uh, divided by 140 which is our 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 sample size that's all in parentheses all right now question so this is to say that um when I do a sample of 140 individuals, I expect the sample proportion to be 0.11 with a standard deviation of 0.026. So that's the standard error of my sample proportion. What's the probability that at least 10% of the sample are left-handed? That means 10% or more of the sample are left-handed. What's the probability my sample proportion is uh, 0.10 or more okay well we can do this using um, uh, the z of the normal distribution so i'm going to do again i'm actually looking for a right tail probability so i'm going to use one minus my norm dot dist uh, x is 0.10 the mean is 0.11 the standard deviation i already got and my cumulative is true i want cumulative probability you always do uh, and that should be everything I put in. That should get me a number, 64.73%. Or there's a 64.7% chance that my sample proportion, if I, if I sampled 140 individuals, that the sample proportion is no lower than 10%. Enough percents for you? Hope it's not confusing. All right, now let's look at the sampling distribution of the sample mean. Uh, suppose that in a population, the mean number of children in a household is 2.43. A sample of 20 individuals have a mean of 3.12 children and a standard deviation of 1.77. What is the T statistic? The T statistic is found by taking the observed value for the sample mean 3.12 minus the um the minus the uh this the mean for the population 2.43 and i'm going to divide that by the sample the standard deviation of 1.77 divided by the square the the square root of the sample size this is the standard error. So this is my T statistic. All right, now look at that formula. It's, it's the sample mean minus the population mean divided by the standard deviation over the square root of the sample size. Be sure to put that denominator all in parentheses because otherwise you, you'll be dividing by the square root of 20 in the wrong way and, it, and you'll end up getting a 
bigger number than you expected to get. Or sorry, it'll be a much smaller number than you expected. 1.74. If my one thing you should be clear is if my sample mean is greater than the population mean, I should have a positive t statistic. And if my sample mean is below the population mean, I should have a negative t statistic. Now let's see, what's the probability of sampling 22 people from the population and getting a sample mean of 3.26? Oh. Uh, of at least 3.26, or let me let's let's word that as uh, of 3.26 uh, or more. Again, I'm I'm doing another right tail probability. I'm going to put it over here. This is going to be t dot dist dot rt. I want to do a right tail probability, and that, so there's actually a function for that in R. It's t dot dist dot rt. Uh, the value I'm interested in is the value 3.26. Uh, I'm sorry, I already found, I, I want to use my T statistic, which I already found, one point, well, let's just click on that cell. Okay, I want to find the probability in a T distribution, the probability uh, to the right of 1.7433. Three. With how many degrees of freedom? It's the sample size minus 1, 20 minus 1. Of course, that's 19, but I'm just going to type in 20 minus 1 to emphasize that's what it is. The sample size, oh, a, what's the, probably a sampling of 22 people from the individual of the population? I guess I'll change that to 22. That's a little different. Okay, that's my probability. There's only a 4.79% chance that my sample mean is going to be 3.26 or more if I sample 22 people. All right, let's look at this. A sample of 14 individuals is taken. What's the 95th percentile for the sample mean? In other words, there's a 95% chance that the sample mean is below what value? So um, again, I'm going to assume 1.77. It would be the, the, my estimate of the, of the uh, standard deviation. But anyway, I'm still going to use a T distribution. This is going to be found using the uh, I'll do it over here, uh, t dot inv. Uh, again, I'm one of the 95th percentile. I'm going to use 0.95 to get this. And the um, for 14 individuals, that means 13. This is, this is actually t star. This is the critical value for a t distribution. But in my distribution, um, the mean is, the mean is 2.43. So what I want to do is go that this many standard deviations above the mean. Um, sorry, the, this many standard errors above the mean. <laughs> okay, what is the standard error? The mean is, of the of the distribution is two point point four three. The standard deviation is one point seven seven, and the standard error is. 1.77 over the square root of n, oh, the square root of 14. Okay, so what I want to do to get an actual number, like the, the children is going, I'm going to, the, the number of children, it's going to be the mean plus t star times the standard error, 3.26774. In other words, there is a 95% chance that the sample mean from a sample of 14 individuals will be below 3.26 children per household. All right. So I hope this, these examples will be helpful for you on the challenge activities this week. Uh, and uh, these, so all the, I'll just go back and rewatch some of those functions I used in Excel um, if, if you didn't quite catch it. Uh, anyway, hope things go well. I'll, I'll uh, see you. Well, I won't see you. You might listen to me in the next video. Bye.